abducted in fresh attack. 14 bodies recovered from Zumba Guni River following a boat mishap involving locals in Niger State. Nigeria's Security and Civil Defense Corps arrests seven suspects and for theft and vandalism of electrical cables and railway tracks. And on the foreign scene, Zelensky warns of Russian forces regrouping to attack South Donbas region as UN warns number of refugees crosses 4 million. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Updates. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for joining. Now the details of the news. Residents of Shinono in Shinono local government area of Kaduna State recovered another improvised explosive device on Friday. The device is detected 24 hours after an IED can uh, concealed in a bucket was found. And spokesman of the state's police command, ASP Mohammed Jaligi, confirmed the discovery, saying anti-bomb squad team were mobilized to the area. Friday's object is discovered in a cherry can covered with a black nylon. And meanwhile, one bandit was killed during the invasion of Ongwerbulus and Ongwerugimbia communities in Chico local government area of Kaduna State on Thursday. Reports say three residents were also killed during the invasion, which occurred around 8 p.m. Residents said they heard gunshot that lasted four hours, forcing many of them to flee. A number of states, Governor Trukuma Soludo has urged security agencies to go after criminals and intensify security to protect lives and property in the state. Governor Soludo made the call at Newi South, a local government area of Park Secretariat attacked by arsonists on Wednesday night. The governor inspected the building set ablaze by the hoodlums, which include work department, education building, traditional council office, a public complaint commission office, and a property department office. So Ludo, who is accompanied by the state commissioner of police, Echeng Echeng, and other heads of security agencies, condemned the attack, describing it as mindless and very unfortunate. The money that should have been used to hire teachers, the money that, has been, that should have been used to pave roads, the money that should have been used to provide water, the money that should have been used to provide the basics to the people, will now be used to start rebuilding the buildings. Who is the loser? Who loses? We had bleeds for the man in the street, for the common man, because it is the man in the street, that Okada rider, that woman that sells pepper by the roadside in the market. That's the person who is going to pay for this. Because the money to be used to repair this is the money that should have been used for their benefit. The security agencies will get to the bottom of it, but I tell you not to despair. No amount of arson or broadletting will bring down the spirit of our number. We are strong and we'll keep getting stronger. Nay, we south. Oh, wow will be stronger for it. We can't let them prevail over the 99.9% .9 innocent people um, who go about their businesses, you know, toil every day. We are hard-working people. We respect life, we respect property, because that's the foundation of our society. The House of Representatives has urged security agencies to intensify responses to armed bandit attack in Giwa and Berdyangwari local government areas of the state. And uh, they made this known during a pally. Uh, and that, that, they said that this followed adoption of the motion moved on on the matters of urgent public importance by Shehu Balarabe from Kaduna. Uh, state on attacks on communities in his constituencies where more than 117 people have been killed and 130 abducted and valuables stolen. The report. With bandit attacks on roads and railway and attempts on Kaduna Airport, it's been one attack too many. 
In his debate, Representative Sheo Balarabe said attacks on people in Kaduna State, particularly his constituency, is already unbearable, where many have been killed, abducted, cows, goats, vehicles and motorcycles stolen. Concerned that victims of this attack who have been displaced in my constituency are taking refuge in local government and local government areas. Look at Mararaba Yakawada, Women's Center Yakawada, Town Hall Yakawada, Primary Health Care Yakawada, BATC Giwa, Fatika District Head Office and, uh, and, and his official residence. Other members who contributed described the motion as worrisome. They are shocked that security agencies cannot track down bandits that have contacted families of those abducted from the train for ransom. Any government that fails and or neglects to secure the lives and property of its citizens, that government is not supposed to last longer than absolutely necessary because that is the primacy of governance. It's just like a medical doctor putting professionalism on, the, on one hand aside. You presented a patient. As a patient relative, you said, okay, every month I will give you 100 million naira until when the patient recovers or otherwise. The doctor will make sure that particular patient did not die and he will continue to maintain that he did not recover because he will keep on tapping the money. It's a simple analysis and every simple person can understand. Government in this case has to rise up to its responsibility. Call a spade a spade. If it's about funding, each and every one of us here knows we have never had any cause to contemplate funding our security agencies. And I believe our relevant, relevant committees are following up in terms of implementation of such fundings through our budget, through their oversight procedures, processes, the why things should continue this way. The House later adjourned due to what it described as the worsening security situation in the country, making the motion as the only item treated at plenary. And on a very sad note, at least 14 bodies have been recovered from the Zumbaguni River in Niger State following a boat mishap involving locals fleeing from bandits. A resident in the area, Michael Madaki, told Daily Trust correspondent that the bodies of the four children and nine women had been recovered while search for the remaining bodies was ongoing. Meanwhile, Governor Abu Bakr Saini Balo has directed the Niger State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, to immediately commence a search and rescue operation for the remaining bodies of the victims. The governor, in a statement through his chief press secretary, Mary Noel Badje, described the incident as disturbing and painful and directed the agency to also provide succor for the remaining fleeing villages. The Borno State Command of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps has arrested seven suspects involved in theft and vandalism. Parading the suspect before newsmen at the defense headquarters in Maiduguri, the state commandant, the state commandant rather, Musa Farouk, said the suspects were arrested for vandalizing electrical cables and railway tracks. Farouk added that its patrol operatives also recovered PMS from the suspects. We arrested one Sanda Ali, a male, 15 years. Mohamed Baba Mustafa, a male, 17 years old. Gaji, Gaji Kachala, a driver to a golf saloon car, with which they conveyed several railway assets. For instance, irons, 60 pieces of railway irons, seven pieces of railway slippers. This act, you all agree with me, offends the spirit of Nigerian economy. These guys are saboteurs and they'll be treated within the framework of justice. May I sound warning to all the criminal elements involved in vandalism of government assets and infrastructure that we will pursue them until the end is put off. We will not tolerate the continuous vandalism of our governmental assets, particularly in Brunei State, that has been devastated over time 
as a result of insurgency. In the aspects of electricity, the good people of Canembro now have been put into darkness for over 12 years now. The President of the Republic of Niger, Mohamed Bazoum, has opened up his discussion with President Mohamed Buhari during his state visit. He speaks with State House reporters after the meeting held at the presidential villa in Abuja. Bazoum said the discussions focused on the economy and security situation, which he described as issues of mutual benefit to both Niger and Nigeria. He said the meeting discussed the joint big military operation that kicked off in the Lake Chad Basin region against the terrorists being conducted by the multinational joint tax force, MNGTF. Um, His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari on issues that relate um, uh, to economic and the security situations in our countries in a manner that we push these issues to be of benefit, of mutual benefit to both uh, countries, uh, Niger and Nigeria. Um, my visit coincide with a very big operation that is taking place jointly uh, in the lectured basal region uh, against the terrorists. And this uh, big operation is being conducted by MNJTF, the Multinational Joint Task Force. And as you know very well, um, the operations of the uh, multinational joint task force is um, funded almost entirely by Nigeria and uh, this operation is meant to and will certainly um, um, uh, help in providing security in addressing the challenges that both countries are facing. Uh, I want to reiterate my commendation and thanks uh, to President Muhammadu Buhari um, who because of his uh, support this operation is going on and will be very much beneficial. Um, <clears throat> on economic issues, we discussed the um, Kano Kasina Maradi Railway uh, project, and uh, this project is uh, an infrastructure that is that will integrate the two economies, the economies of Nigeria and Niger. And uh, so I'm here to thank, I want to thank. Uh, His Excellency President Mohamed Buhari for his effort to ensure, for ensuring that this project has taken off and I hope that it will be sustained because this project will radically change um, the, uh, the trading exchange between the two countries. You're watching Trust TV News update coming up shortly. We'll take a look at women competing in Abuja black market. This and many more shortly to stay with us. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Trust TV's news update and let's take a look at our top stories again. We told you that residents of Shanono in Shanono local government area of Kaduna State discovered another improvised explosive device on Friday and the device is detected 24 hours after an IED concealed in a bucket was found. And we told you that 14 bodies were recovered from Zumba Guni River following a boat mishap involving locals in Niger State. 
And moving on to other stories, as part of efforts to promote transparency and accountability in government businesses, Center for Fiscal Transparency and Integrity Watch presents its Transparency and Integrity Watch report, uh, which it, handed, it was handed over. And the Transparency and Integrity Index Methodology Handbook it follows the need for further guidance of most the ministries, departments and agencies on the methodology and timely implementation of the 2021 Transparency and Integrity Index, a pioneer project the center had earlier launched. Trust TV's Aisha Salyu has more details. Technology-driven solutions are now being deployed to monitor public sector expenditures, strengthen public sector integrity mechanisms and promote accountability in strengthening Nigeria's anti-corruption architecture by supporting criminal justice reform and implementation of enabling policies, programs and laws, the Center for Fiscal Transparency and Integrity Watch launches a methodology handbook on transparency and integrity index used to checkmate activities of the public sector. You know, we have a problem of corruption in Nigeria and every election cycle comes and people talk about corruption. And we found out that it's actually much more expensive to combat corruption after the deed has occurred. So what we try to do is to ensure that one of the indicators of combating corruption is a prevention arm. And the prevention arm entails where you, people are more transparent. I'm talking about agencies now, ministries, departments and agencies where they are more transparent. You find that, that the corruption reduces. So our little assessment of countries that are more developed than Nigeria is that their democracies are deeper because there's more transparency in public finance. So that is why we did this initiative to uh, encourage MDAs, especially as and state governors, state governments and local governments to ensure they are transparent, especially with regards to public finance and other aspects of corruption. The assessment handbook is expected to guide ministries, departments and agencies to promote transparency and integrity mechanisms deployed in the public sector using five variables and 31 sub-variables to assess the availability of information on public institutions' websites at all levels. What we're trying to encourage MDA is just to be more transparent. Nobody is going to antagonize anybody as they are more transparent with their information. Citizens will know well, those that are doing well and those that are not doing well will be encouraged to do well next time. The initiative by the Centre contributes to Nigeria's goal of reducing corruption by supporting Nigerian-led efforts that strengthen accountability, transparency and participation. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. And in another development, a forced scarcity has forced many to stay in long queues and even sleep over for hours. This comes as an advantage for black marketers to redeem in thousands. Predominantly male-dominated, the story this time around catches women on the streets of Abuja, persuading motorists to buy fuel from them. Zainabala captured this piece with her mobile phone. Take a look. I was just passing by. Uh this filling station behind me is an NMPC filling station along um, Kuba Express around DD Access. And then something really interesting caught my attention. There were black marketers, you know, on the roadside, predominantly male. And then when I moved past them, I saw quite a number of women, you know, standing also selling black markets. And then there were people standing by the roadside and they were negotiating just as uh, the male, their male counterparts did. And, and this really, I felt a kind of remorse. And then also, it also tells you how hard the country has become. A lot of them didn't want to speak to me because uh, some of the agents in the filling stations were warning them not to talk to me, not to talk to anybody. Because I think they have to negotiate to actually get this fuel from them. They have to pay extra to get this fuel from them to resell uh, the fuel. Bye. 
And still ahead, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, on Thursday urges members governing board of the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, to support the commission to realize the ambitious digital switchover project aimed at transforming the broadcast industry. The minister gave the charge at the formal inauguration of the board in Abuja. The board chairman, Bashir Omolaja Bolariwa, pledged not to disappoint the minister for the confidence reposed in them. I urge you all to buy into this project to ensure that NBC is able to deliver on what we perceive as a legacy project because the DSO would change the face of broadcasting in Nigeria. Also, please note that as we move closer to the 2023 general elections, the National Broadcasting Commission will come under increasing pressure to step up its regulatory role to prevent a repeat of what transpired before, during, and after the 2019 general elections. I want to make a promise on behalf of the members that we we'll try as much as possible to acquaint ourselves with the management of uh, the NBC and, of course, the ministerial task force, of which you said that you are the, you are the chair. We we'll try as much as possible to assist the commission to be able to live up uh, to be desired and achieve the desired uh, objective. The Senate Committee on Ethics, Privileges and Public Petitions has summoned Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Gatwila Kwabu, and the sole administrator of Niger Delta Development Commission, Efiong Akwa, over non payment of 2.2 billion naira to contractors. The committee said it is acting on petitions filed by Acom Service Services Limited over alleged refusal by the minister and the NDDC administrator to pay for the survey carried out in the nine states under the commission based on a 2.2 billion naira contractual agreement. The report. Chairman of the committee, Ayo Akinye Lure, said the committee had written several letters of invitation to the Minister of Natural Delta Affairs. As well as the chairman of the Niger Delta Development Commission, F. Young Akwa, on petitions against them with no response. Akwabio and Akwa are therefore to appear before the panel unfailingly on April 12, 2022, by 2 p.m. or face arrest. Former Marine Leader of the Senate Indirect Assembly, your colleagues are calling on you to come over, to come and tell us why these innocent Nigerians have not been paid. If you have a problem of appropriation, we are here for you to give you appropriation. We want you to direct the sole administrator, Mr. Aqua, to be here on 12th of April, 2022, to come and tell us why these Nigerians have not been paid. The lawmaker further called on President Muhammadu Buhari to constitute the board of the NDDC without delay to remove one man's overbearing influence on the commission. The Niger Delta Development Commission has come under scrutiny in recent time over issues of mismanagement of funds, among others. And now to business news, Nigeria's external reserves fell by $330 million in March, according to figures 
obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria on Thursday. The CBN's figures show that the foreign exchange reserve, which commenced on the first day of March 2022, $39.86 billion fell to $39.55 billion, billion as of March 30, 2022. And following the invasion of Ukraine by Russian forces, crude oil prices have continued to flow on trade as the global energy sector continues to experience disruptions. Brent, the crude against which Nigeria's oil is priced, uh, which had jumped above $100 per barrel in the past few weeks, hit $120 as of Thursday. The CBN has expressed worries over the effect of massive oil theft on the oil sector and the external reserves. Also, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited said that the country had lamented that the nation was not meeting its OPEC crude oil production quota lately. The governor of, CB, of CBN's Godwin Mefele had on the last Monetary Policy Committee meeting expressed concerns over oil production and external reserves. Mefele, however, said that the CBN is in collaboration with the Bankers Committee and was working to boost non-oil export through the raise to a $200 billion. And now on to foreign news. The Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Thursday said the situation in the south and the Donbas region regained extremely, became extremely difficult and reiterated that Russia is building up forces near the besieged city of Mariupol, adding that they still need to go down a very difficult path to get everything they want. The United Nations says the number of Ukrainian refugees fleeing Russia's war in their country has crossed to 4.1 million, adding that the tragedy must stop. Reports say women and children account for 90% of those who have fled. Half of those are children, Ukrainian men aged 18 to 60, and are eligible for military call-up and cannot leave. And that wraps the news updates at this hour. For more of this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.